Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. <laughs> My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me as always via Zoom is... Is Matthew TV musical show... Um, idiot, fake fan, worshipper of Kevin Smith, because... I liked Masters of the Universe and didn't think that it was a social justice warrior agenda to emasculate men. Uh, Haas. That's a really long name. It, it is. It gets longer each episode. Um, pretty soon I'm just going to start reading out of a dictionary and then, you know, we'll just, we'll just see where it goes from there. Yeah. So, um, I think I need to change my name then. Just to okay. keep, keep up with you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to do that next time. Um, anyways, uh, today on the show, we are covering <clears throat> a pilot that aired on TV, um, in 1990, entitled... Shangri-La Plaza. It was a uh, musical comedy sitcom. Uh, featuring a future cult member slash leader. <laughs> um, also featuring Jan from The Office. And uh, co-created by um, the original Michael Myers <laughs> from ni- <laughs> from the original Halloween movie. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Nick Castle, that is. So, so, so we have <laughs> Nick. Nick Castle is the is the co-creator with Mark Mueller. Um. It was written by those two guys and Craig Saffin. Um, s- the show starred <clears throat> Melora Hardin um, and Allison Mack as a uh, mother and daughter. Melora Hardin, as we know, is Jan from uh, The Office. And Allison Mack, who we know from Nexium. <laughs> I mean, small <clears throat> So, oh, or honey, I sh- honey, um, honey, we shrunk ourselves. Yeah, you yes. know, mm-hmm. <laughs> which we we reviewed a, few, a couple years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, we also yep. we also have in the in the in the uh, cast Terrence Mann, who uh, is like a big time Broadway star. Um. It also featured uh, Savion Glover, the uh, award-winning tap dancing choreographer. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, this is a interesting show here. Quite possibly the most unique sitcom we've ever covered. <laughs> yeah, it's is is it's. it's yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's bad. It's just it's very, um, very unique concept, for especially for 1990. Um, I'm not surprised it didn't go that far, but you know, it's pretty. Uh, well, I guess not not so much because that was around an era where they had cop rock. I mean, I think cop rock was a few years later, but but still, um, or it might have been before this. Actually, I'm not sure, maybe? but yeah, oh. but but still, it, it's interesting. I mean, this is. Uh, <clears throat> Obviously, I mean, it's a, it's a straight up musical. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, we did have things in the future, like you know, we do have musicals. Like, I mean, there was like uh, that. Uh, what is that? Uh, Extraordinary playlist or something that they have out that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Netflix or something. Or it it, or... it it was on it was on NBC. It just got canceled, but um, 
it's uh i mean that that was kind of a musical show you had uh you know um like glee obviously and things of that nature you know so yeah you know that that this was kind of a precursor too but in a very interesting way um yeah see when i started when I, it was funny when i first started watching it i didn't know it was a musical um oh, yeah. and so i'm sitting here and i'm watching the first scene and these guys start singing at first but they only sang like one line at first and then they spoke in between you know mm. and so i just thought that they were that it just kind of sounded like it was sing songy in the way they said it and then they broke into like a full song and i was like this is a musical okay <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a surprise um yeah so uh what happens in this episode here matt um well the intro is a really interesting song right there and um it it's uh this the you know jan from the office you know because that's what you know apparently that's her only uh <laughs> role no she's been in a lot of stuff and uh M- melora harden we'll just call her yeah. by her name yeah <laughs> Well, I didn't know her name. That's why I was. Um, yeah, I know. I'm just saying we're, we can from now on call her Malora. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, she um, she just moves um into the area with her daughter. She um, inherited a, a donut shop with, from her late husband, uh, or who apparently like both her and her daughter didn't like apparently because like the way they talk about him is not very yeah. endearing. But but anyway, so he he owned the donut shop, and I guess he left it to her and his will. I guess I don't know. And then uh, so you know, it, it kind of revolves around like three different um, people's stories. Like you got you got her and her daughter's story, and it's her just kind of checking out the donut shop, and it's like a lot of people are kind of depressed it like just almost looks like they're sleeping then the woman who works there is just like pouring like coffee like really like sloppily basically into the cups and um like some coffee's just like spilling all over the table and then like so she like introduces herself as like the new owner and then like the woman who works there is like all of a sudden becomes more like perky you know because she's like oh shoot you know new owner you know type of thing i gotta gotta impress the new owner and then um and then you got these two dudes who are like they they own and run a like car mechanic shop like in the same kind of plaza and they they're like doing their own songs too and like it's it's like basically like the difference between like the one guy he's looking for like his one true love and any other guy is just kind of like a womanizer, you know, type dude. Like he, he ended up taking like, I think like one of the hot rods and, um, was just trying to pick up women basically like pretending he was like some rich dude or whatever. Uh, which, you know, it's felony, you know, stealing a car anyway. Um, but you know, this no. is the nineties. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a joy ride. I guess technically he didn't steal it. Because he always intended on bringing them back, so I guess you know it's not as bad, if you will, and um, and like they kind of do their song where they just sort of like this, you know, they're just like telling each other their differences, like you know, philosophy, I guess, when it comes to love, you know, the dude with like the long hair, he's like you know the wild guy or whatever. He's like, eh, who cares? Just you know, find anyone that you can mess around with, sleep with, you know, and. The other guy's like, no, I gotta find my one true love. And then, uh, and then there's like a third one where it's like these kids are like doing like break dancing stuff and like, yeah. no, not really break dancing. Where, where they out? Remember? Um, well, it's kind of break dancing, kind of like just dancing and uh, okay. and rapping. Yeah, they're doing like this cool like you know 1990s style thing and. Um, I, I do though. I, I swear though. I think I did see something where there was a video store, and I think it had Michael Myers on the. Did you see that? Like a Michael Myers poster, like for Halloween. Uh, yeah, there was like lots of different shows. Okay. But yeah, but that, 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 yeah, it was probably in there as a. As a what you call it, um, a like a uh, 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 Easter egg or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah like an Easter egg, and uh, I mean. 
And then, you know, yeah, her daughter, you know, um, I, I forgot their names. Uh, I, I don't think I remember actually know any other names in the show. But um, the no, daughter, her daughter, was, daughter was Jenny, I think. Jenny, yeah. yeah. She ends up um, hanging out at the mechanic shop, you know, at one point. And uh, yeah, what else happens? I know that some other stuff happens. She, kinda... When she's at the at the mechanic shop, and this is played by Allison Mack, um, mm-hmm. she... Uh, she takes control of things like she did in her real life and tried to control people. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyways, um, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Um, okay, no. Anyways, the the the, the kid is uh at the mechanic shop and she uh she's basically she she, she understands more about the freaking how to fix the car than the guys do and stuff and then. She's playing around yeah. with cars and stuff and everything. She was told by her mom to be back in 10 minutes, and then her mom comes to find her, and it's been, like, 20 minutes. And uh, while, while she's there, the the two guys see, see the mom, and they're like, wow, she's hot, and, you know, sort of thing in their head. And uh, they uh, <clears throat> both start singing about how they want to, like, win her over for different reasons, you know. <clears throat> and... Uh, yeah, they they go back to the donut shop, and we have um, the a song about how to make donuts, <laughs> which is the greatest song about how to make donuts I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Mind you, it's the only one I've ever heard in my life, but <laughs> it is the greatest one I've ever heard. <laughs> so uh, they. Uh, yeah, the, the the kid learns how to make donuts from the from the lady behind the counter that works there. Um, this this show is weird, Matt. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, know. I, know. <clears throat> I do want to point out something though. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not eat those donuts. Um, not yeah, n- well- not not just because of how bad they are, but one major thing is the kid never washed her hands after touching the car. Oh, that's right. I yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, and then she's, you know, throwing donuts and, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Motor oil and grease and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. But then again, they, they've they got, like, hair on the donuts and all this other weird shit. Yeah, it's, it's that's so right. Yeah. yeah, it was gross. Um, It made me not, to, not want to eat donuts again for quite a while after watching this, honestly. Um, exactly. Like, wait a minute, what's going on at Dunkin' Donuts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> never gonna go to tim hortons again and anyway so the uh <laughs> um so that happens and then um do you want to take a break matt actually <laughs> oh yeah Just, sure so, i'm trying to remember what else happens i need a break to think about it um <laughs> <clears throat> we'll be right back folks after a word from our sponsors What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there and we are Okay, yep. so um, 
what else happens here? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> uh, well, like, you know, like, uh, you were saying, you know, that she was kind of, um, you know, ruining the donuts, much like she ruined, you know, the countless lives when she was, you know, the leader, slash, well, one of the high, higher ups in the cult, Nexium. You know, how she didn't wash her hands, unlike how she washed her hands of the affairs of, you know, so it's kind of like a reversal of reality, you know, but just like she corrupted the donuts, how she corrupted, you know, allegedly, you know, uh, was it allegedly now or is it official now? When, um, her? her? Yeah. Oh, she's been convicted. She's been convicted. It's official now because yeah, we yeah. can't. We don't. We don't have to say allegedly anymore. No. Like we did last. Time. All right. Cool. Uh, just making sure. And um, yeah, they make donuts and all that bullshit and really b- 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 bullshit. Um, mm-hmm. Is it b- 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 back? Um, b- 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 bad. Bad to the bone. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, she makes a shitty donuts. Okay. Suffice to say, and then, um, you know, the two dudes are like both doing their own song about trying to, you know, woo uh, the donut shop lady, <laughs> and, and like, <laughs> and then, uh, they, then they both end up like running into each other, and then they realize, like, wait a minute, like you're doing the same thing I'm doing, you know, type of thing. So they, like, you know, start arguing about, like, well, it's not fair, blah, blah, blah. And, and, <laughs> and then she opens... I'm, I'm, it's a very riveting tale I'm, I'm telling here. And then um, and then she opens the door because she can, you know, hear them arguing outside the donut shop. And then they're like, oh, we didn't know you were there, even though we're at the donut shop that you own. And that you're currently, you know, inside of, and then like the the wild guy, you know, he ends up like stealing the, the flowers that the other guy bought and trying to act like you know he got her the flowers even though he didn't get get rid of flowers, and then uh, I don't know some bullshit happened after that, and then uh, and then she finds out that like, you know, far from inherit inheriting a successful business from her late husband uh he pretty much like tanked the business so she's like basically owns like a money pit and it's like as soon as she got like whatever money that the business um had left her like this this guy came in like right behind the the lawyer to collect the the rent check so she's you know got nothing now and so she's like contemplating like whether or not to just like, just sell whatever she can from the business and just kind of you know move on for from her life and then that's when they have like this song about like like that's the way it goes or yeah because or, every everybody thinks that she's leaving she told everybody she was leaving yeah and so the guys were upset and uh, everybody's upset because you know the the woman's upset she's gonna lose her job the um you know. The guys are upset yeah. because the the hot girl's leaving, and <laughs> that they that they've known for like two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then then after the song, Allison Max character goes out and you know tells everybody we're staying. After she <laughs> decides to stay because they basically are forced to stay. Um, which, which is, you know, you know, just like, like very much like how you know she forced people, you know, to stay, you know, and say have Nexium. So yeah, you know. exactly. If anything, this, this this show can almost be like a prophecy of her future life because cause Shangri La, and that's supposed to be like a sort of parad paradisical. Is that is that even a word? A, a, a sort of paradise type of thing, and you know, that's what she painted. You know. Nexium to be, you know, to get people, you know, inside the cult, and then once, and then you know, once they, you know, found out, obviously, you know, they mm. couldn't leave then. So it's, you know, it's very similar. Um, Cults are a lot like mini malls. Yeah, well, one could say that the mini mall itself is kind of a cult, yes. you know, cult like environment. You know, it 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 turns on your senses to overdrive. <laughs> Because there's so many different, you know, stores that you can go to, and then you just 
you start just losing, you know, your sense of self and individuality and you just become one with like the capitalist Borg, just store after store is calling you, telling you to spend your money. Then you, you run out of money. So then you're like, oh, well, I get a credit card. Then I'll just pay off the credit card month by month. You just keep buying things on the credit cards, things you don't actually even want. Then you come home and you just see all this, this piles of junk. You're like, did I buy this? Where did this stuff come from? You see the receipts, though. It says you bought it. You don't remember buying it. You don't even remember being inside the store. But you were there, apparently. In anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism is a cult. Yep. Anyway, so... Um, <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, um... <laughs> The uh, yeah. So 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 basically, they they all they, they they're ending up staying, and it's basically setting up the series for a series that never happened. <laughs> right. Um. I mean, there's people in the opening credits that aren't even in the episode. Oh really? Yeah, because they were supposed to be in future episodes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um. So it, it's kind of funny. Um. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I don't know. Do you want to take another break here, Matt? I know it's really quick to take another break, but then we'll come back and we'll talk about the, uh, some like trivia and some reactions, like, um, some, you know, yeah. re reviews and stuff of this, uh, wonderful sitcom we just watched. Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back. What is Gen X? What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice Podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And, as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there And we are back. Back. Yep. Okay, so do you want to hear some trivia here, Matt, about this Shangri-La Plaza? <clears throat> yeah, let's do it. Okay, the, sing the theme song entitled Shangri-La Plaza is sung by all nine credited cast members. However, only seven of them appear in the actual episode that follows. Only <laughs> one episode was ever produced. Um, it's a uh, half-hour musical set in Southern California Mini, mini Mall. So, uh, yeah. Um, the show had hoped to be picked up for the 1990-91 fall season on um, CBS, but did not get picked up. Um, the pilot aired once in the summer of 1990 as part, as, uh, as part of CBS's Monday com comedy lineup. Um, it was one of three shows in the 1990-91 TV season that had musical theme in its series. Cop Rock <laughs> came out that same year. And so did Hull High. Um, however, <laughs> this did not make it past the pilot phase. Um, interesting fact. Um, Craig, uh, Craig Saffin and Mark uh, Mueller, the, the composers for the show. Um, Craig wrote the, uh, did the music for Stand and Deliver. He also wrote the Cheers theme song. <laughs> um, Mark Mueller, uh, 
He wrote the theme song to DuckTales. Oh, cool. He also, wrote, he also wrote Jennifer Page's 1998 hit, Crush. Um, and uh, they had already worked together. Like um, The third creator, uh, Nick Castle, um, is also a very celebrated uh, film writer and director. And uh, I just wanted to point out, he directed one of my favorite movies of all time, The Last Starfighter. So, yeah. Cool. Have you ever seen The Last Starfighter? Yeah, I have. Yeah, he directed that. It's it's one of my cool. favorite movies of all time. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah, it was actually shot at a real uh, a real mini mall, which still exists. Um, it's at the. Cool. Uh, Yeah, the the, uh, the actual uh, mini mall where they filmed is uh, located at the corner of uh, Vineland Avenue and Burbank Boulevard in North Hollywood, California. So if you know you're out that way and you want to visit the set of a <laughs> failed uh, sitcom <laughs> from 31 years ago, <laughs> yes, you can you can go there. It's still there. It's, it's still a shopping mini mall. Yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you can't take Allison, you know, Mac with you because she, she's currently, you know, in prison. But yeah, she's, um, she's got other yeah. commitments. And yeah. Um, yeah, you might be able to take um, what's her name, Laura, um, Melora Harden. Yeah, Melora Harden. If, I mean, she wants to. I don't know, but yeah, you could ask her. Maybe her, or Terrence yeah. Mann, or somebody else that was involved in it. Um, <laughs> Just call him up and be like, hey, do you want to take a walk down memory lane here? Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, the Internet Movie Database has three user reviews. <laughs> um, the first one is a 9 out of 10. Okay. And this was uh, written by Dizong on January 1st of 2009. Um <laughs> Okay. Would have been fun as a series. I'm pleasantly surprised to see I'm not the only one who remembers this fun half-hour pilot from over 15 years ago. Filled with uh, kitsch um, um, sets and bright colors. The plot is as follows, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to go through that. Um... <laughs> The, the musical numbers were nearly all memorable and ranged from the kitschy donut hole to the one really beautiful ballad, um, Don't Tell Me I Can Really Care. Terrence Mann and Savion Glo Glover, the rapper on crutches, are major Broadway stars, and the uh, other uh, three leads clearly could have been. Uh, Melora Hardin and uh, Carmen Lundy are singer-actresses. Jeff Yeager is just an actor with a great voice. And the songs are done with style and by someone who truly loves musical comedy. I uh, taped this pilot by accident in 1990, and my sister and I watch it every few years for fun. It's in uh, terrible condition, but you can still hear the songs. Not sure if they could have uh, sustained the energy for an entire series, but it could have been fun to watch the game cast give it a try. Yep. Okay. Um, there's another... Uh, here's here's an 8 out of 10 from uh, B. Patrick 2 on May 13th of 2008. Um... I'm the only one, aside from Nick Castle, who remembers this. <laughs> I remember this pilot. There was something odd about a half-hour musical set in a mini mall. The set was was a uh, was a sick little place that still exists to this day. <clears throat> it is at the corner of Vineland and Burbank Boulevard. The trivia section says this only aired once, but I do recall seeing the pilot sometime later on CBS very late at night. It was an odd time for TV. CBS was at the time renewing TV series is not on season contracts, but six-month commitments. 
I'm almost happy this didn't get picked up because it would have been a true struggle between the creators and network. I hope Nick decides to revise it as a cable series. I don't think that's happening. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it could actually work this time around. Um, yeah. <laughs> we have another uh, 8 out of 10. This is from QWERTY26. Um, and this is from July 18th of 2008. Um, you are not the only one who remembers this. Hard to believe that this was only shown once, and I remember it 18 years later. It had one of the best jokes of all time. Little girl, mommy, when did, when daddy went away, did he go to heaven? Mother thinks about it for a minute. No, little girl, good. <laughs> Still laugh when I think about it. I never realized uh, till tonight that it was only shown once. I also like the singing that was done in it. Um, very bizarre, but enjoyable. I remember CBS had fairly large advertising campaign to promote it. There must have been something else on CBS at this time I watched. Okay, those are the only reviews we have for this on the Internet mm. Movie Database. Okay, so... Um, yeah, there's a lot of interesting uh, articles out there, too, that I found um, about this situation from places like the New York Times and the um, and some different uh, publications in Los Angeles, too. Some from that time and some from, like, years later, which are interesting to read and find out more about this uh, wonderful, wonderful sitcom. Um, Matt, would you recommend anybody watch this? <clears throat> yeah, sure. I, I think it's I think it's pretty good. Um, it's, it's very colorful. Um, the uh, so the set designer for this show was also the set designer for Pee Wee's Playhouse. Okay, so that'll <laughs> well, give you some idea of the colorful aspect of it. It's very yeah. It's very uh, late eighties, early nineties looking. Yeah, it is. So if, if like if, if you're looking for some good colors to sort of like you know brighten up your your mood or whatever and this would be a decent show to, to watch um yeah um yeah you know, it's not like these new movies where you like have to like squint like is that is that a person there i can't tell <laughs> um do you do you think this could have lasted like a season or, or more no um i i think at most this would have been like uh like a mini series like I just can't imagine a musical like I mean like this uh, with Glee. It's different because that was about like a high school, so you you can have a sort of revolving cast, you know, and it had a, it had a, like a specific purpose because it was about a Glee club. So like music was like already sort of built in to the concept of the show itself but um yeah, i mean i mean glee the, glee, glee yeah. when it started out like the music that was involved in it like the first few episodes was kind of like organic in there like where they were singing it, it was mm -hmm. it was like the they're just like the 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 like aspect you know where it would be like okay we're singing here in the glee club so we're going to sing a song but then it went into the point where people would just sing randomly like in a regular musical. Right. Um, this was straight up just people singing that aren't singers, yeah. you know. There's no purpose for two guys named Bondo <laughs> who work at a body shop to mm -hmm. start, or, uh, or whatever you want to call it um, to uh, start singing, you know. So um, Yeah, so I, I think it could have been like a mini series. I think it would be okay for like a six- episode miniseries would have been maybe, at most I they, think. maybe they should revive it for Broadway and get the same yeah get the same people there <laughs> yeah you, 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 you can you can have uh you can have Allison Mack come up there on her orange jumpsuit or whatever she's wearing I don't know um <laughs> like make a letter zoom do a zoom uh, <laughs> from Prince it's like her hour of um activity or yeah you know, whatever uh, <laughs> they let her do that like eight days a week. Eight, I mean, eight, eight times a week or whatever, you know, for the matinees right. and the yeah. Um, <laughs> we're terrible, anyway. So, um, I, 
<laughs> no, she's. I know. <laughs> <laughs> how does how did that sweet looking like you know like I mean she looks so like innocent you know like how did she become I don't know just it's it's uh, wild. Uh, she just got really mad because people weren't making donuts right or something. I mean, I don't know what the hell happened. Maybe that's what it was that yeah. just turned her. Yeah. Like, uh. I mean, I had such a crush on her when Smallville first came out, but it's just oh, really? it's like, yeah, I, I didn't really watch it, but I still thought she was cute. You know, it's just like, oh, my God, what the hell? So, um, yeah, it's just sad. Um, it's It's even sadder for all the people that got, you know, yeah, taken advantage of by that cult or any cult for that matter. Um, I, I don't know. It's just sad. Um, but on a happier note, I like, I really liked this, uh, (laughs) this pilot. It was weird Mm -hmm. as hell. Um, I, uh, I saw like a comment on the, uh, on the, um, YouTube video for it where somebody said, watch out rent. Um, yeah, no, I think we said, (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, it's it's funny. Um I hope uh I hope you guys check it out. Um let us know what you think of it. Um send me a message at micacullenpark.com if you want to let us know what you thought of this uh pilot. Go to our uh Facebook group, All Too Real 2 podcast group. Um and you can uh, you know, comment on there. I shared the video on there too, so you can check it out. Um just be really interested in knowing what some of our listeners think of this. Um, and if you enjoyed it as much as we did, um, any other final thoughts here, Matt, before we wrap things up? No, just, um, just, uh, you know, make good donuts. You know, if you, if you make donuts, you know, make, make sure that they, mm-hmm. you know, are good. That's all. And, um, and uh yeah and don't you know don't um don't be mean to people just because they might like you know masters of the universe um the new one you know that you know or don't be mean, okay. or don't be mean to people if they don't like it yeah i mean <laughs> I, I do. um you know it, it's okay to like things um you know not everything is a conspiracy to emasculate men who um, are into cartoons and toys in their forties. Yes, I'm just. I mean, I'm nothing against nothing that. against that because I'm totally into toys and cartoons. No, no, myself. I'm just saying. Usually, but, when you think of a masculine man, you don't think of someone who plays with toys in their forties. Just saying. So, but um, but yes, you know, it, it was, it's the feminist that, that. Okay, sorry. That, that's a. I'm referencing our last episode um, where we got we got an interesting review from someone who. Um, chickened out and deleted their comments apparently they you know didn't feel very forcefully you know about it you know because they they went and deleted them so that's interesting i wrote a really nice long response to the person you know very thought out very very um very kind and very kind courteous and i couldn't couldn't post it because he deleted it so yeah so oh well um oh well (laughs) and my thing is just you know just just realize you know you can like things. You can like Shangri-La Plaza if you want, for example. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean you're weird. Um, you know, just don't, you know, like things so much that you create a cult. And um, <laughs> then you, you know, have an actress from Smallville join that cult. And um, <laughs> then you, you know, end up in prison for most of your life. Um yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Just don't create a cult. That's all I'm saying. Um Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, be sure to uh check out our <laughs> our Patreon. Um check out our uh our T public. You can get some t-shirts there. Um check out uh our group on Facebook like I said. Um we're on TikTok. Got one post. We got one post. Let us know what you want us to do on there. <clears throat> Maybe we'll we start know. doing. Yeah, we have no idea how to <laughs> how to manage the 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 talks and the ticks. And um, until next time, be kind. Rewind. Get vaccinated, people. <laughs>
there is no weird microchip inside of it or anything. Um, no, there is. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there, you know, there are sour cream and onion chips inside of it, but... Yeah, well, that's, you know, to be expected. Yeah, but, um, yes. But, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's, you know, you got cell phones, you've got cameras, you know, if, if they want to find you, they're going to find you. It just doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, they don't need to create a... Could you imagine, I know we're kind of going off the rails here, but, like, you imagine the science and the money that would have to get involved to make a microchip that small that it could fit inside of a syringe. I mean, like, the trillions of dollars that would go into exactly. that. Also, be, well, also like, there's no there's no major poison in there. Sure, it's not, you know, something that's naturally in your body, but it's based on something that should naturally be able to defend against a virus. Um yeah. Yeah. Trust science. Um, yep. All right. <laughs> Being a little preachy. But anyways, um, wear sunscreen, people. Wear a condom. Yeah. Bye bye Thanks for <laughs> listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.